Okay, number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one is uh, to see if actions are we said that one thing uh, the question that I asked what is the meaning of changing the state of an object first I asked what is the object instance yada 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 and I brought this up I wanted to actually separate this into pieces so um, we would have box dot h box dot h would be include Oh, no include, uh, if not defined, um, SDDS, box, underline H, underline, underline, then copy this, and define, and end if, then we're going to have the namespace, 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 uh, namespace, SDDS, and back in here, get the box, put it in box.h, save, box.cpp will hold. CPP will include box.cpp, box.h. It is in the same namespace. By now, I think everybody is clear on this. No one have any question about creating a module. Now, we know what it is, right? So from now on, I'm going to say build a module. I'm not going to say put this in a header file, put that in a CPP file. You know what it is. Classes, modules, we know exactly how they are, OK? So uh, uh, get the stuff for the box, empty, shmempty, all the things, everything other than main. Get out, go back to box.cpp. Um, namespace goes up. Uh, sorry, the include comes up over here. Save it. In here, all I need to do is include box.h, and I don't need anything else. I don't need any IO stream, nothing, OK? Uh, one thing I need that is using namespace uh, stds. That's all, OK? Because it's not using any, any IO stream, nothing in here. Another thing that I wanted to mention was this. When we are, the reason I did this, that I can actually split it in two so we can actually see the header file and the CPP file right side by side. Now, at the end of the class, can you see this? Is it uh, uh, OK, visible? Are we good? All right. Now, <clears throat> look at me. Does that reduces, reduce my weight, increase my height? So you looking at me won't do anything. So essentially, displaying something doesn't change anything in that. If it does, it doesn't make sense. Correct? If you ask me, how are you, I say, I'm fine. Nothing's going to change. I'm just giving you my state, right? But if you give me two bucks and tell me, put it in your pocket, that's a different story. Now I'm changing my property. I'm putting something in my pocket. You follow? So methods sometimes, by logic, should not change the owner, should not change the state of the object when they are in. This type of methods, these type of methods, are all considered to be constant methods. Horizontal line, it's supposed to draw a line. It has nothing to do with the box. It's not going to change the box, right? I have to make it a constant. The constant that comes after 
the name of the method. That cannot be done in a regular function. Doesn't make sense. If a function doesn't have an owner, the constant after the name of the function doesn't mean anything. It's, it's, it's even rare, because you are saying horizontal line is not allowed to change its owner. That's what it means. And I have to do the exact same thing over here. Now, for the rest, I'm going to ask you. Set. Should it be constant? Draw. You don't answer anymore. Draw. Should it be constant? Draw should be constant or not? No? So when you draw the object, its size changes? It gets bigger, smaller? So it's constant. Draw is a constant object. It is not changing the state of the object. When you are checking to see, when you are setting an object to empty state, is it a constant? Should it change the, the state of the object? Is empty, uh, set empty. Set empty should change the object. It is setting it. It is setting the object to minus one, so it cannot be constant. Is empty. It's checking the state to see if it's empty or not. Does it change the object? No, so it has to be constant. Remember, as you saw, it all worked perfectly without this. But it's absolutely wrong. You shouldn't do it. You should think about the logic of your methods, of your member functions. Look at them. If the logic dictates that this should change something inside the class, then don't make it constant. But if you look at the logic of the method, and it doesn't require, not that you shouldn't, it doesn't require, you think that now this doesn't need to change anything, make it constant immediately. Always. Oh, you are thinking C, not C++. Look at main. What you just mentioned is like a huge red sign. What is that? This one, actually. When I draw A, does A change? When I draw B, does B change? OK? Again, if I dance, I dance my way. If you dance, you dance your way. We are doing an over thing. And I, when I walk, I, mock, I walk my way. When she walks, she walks her way. We walk differently, but we both walk. OK? You have to, you have to appreciate that, that each object does the action based on its state. Are we okay with this? Base, state is value, based on its value, based on the value it holds. Okay? You tell me, pick up the table, okay? If I'm strong enough, if the power property of mine is high enough, I can pick it up. If you ask me to pick it up and my power property is not high enough, I won't be able to pick it up. So the action of picking up the table may be different depending on the state of my object, if I had breakfast that morning or not. Right? Something like that. Yes? So assume our object A, uh, they have a minus 100. But is empty and nothing better? Are, uh, is empty doesn't, doesn't change. Set empty? You are saying set. Set it. Of course. No, it's changing. Take a look at the code. What do you see? Of course it's changing. Now, another thing that is important to mention. When you are getting something, you expect things to be there when you are getting it. If you are buying a laptop, you expect it to have a battery, keyboard, screen, 
touchpad, whatever, correct? You can't go buy a laptop and open it up and see there's no keyboard. That doesn't make sense. Certain stuff, objects, when they are clear, when you, when you buy a cell phone, you expect the thing to make a call. If you buy a cell phone that cannot make a call, that's wrong, right? If you buy, I don't know, I don't, I don't, this, is, this, is, this is the aspects that when you, cre when you give birth to a child, you do it only once and it comes out the way it's supposed to be. No, it is supposed to be. If it's not always, if it's, my apologies, I'm being extremely cruel, I'm, I know. But if it comes disfigured, it's because the DNA property was not right. Something was wrong and the constructor that I'm going to mention right now didn't construct it properly. That's what I'm saying. So what, that's what I'm saying. So whenever you build something, it doesn't come out random like our boxes. You can always make a class to get built in certain way. But you can do it only once. When it is built, you cannot do it after. I cannot give birth to myself again. It's impossible. Just think about it for a second. You cannot build a building again. When it's built, it's built. You cannot say, okay, I'm going to build this building again. You cannot. It's built. Done. You eat the food, you ate it, done. You cannot eat the food that you ate again. This is something that happens, the initiation, the action of initialization is supposed to happen only once at the moment of creation. These type of actions, procedures, can be set inside the class. You can actually make a class to do certain things when it's getting created. But remember, these look like a function. I want your attention. Yes. What do I want to say? Yeah. Fun uh, these actions, these actions are there. There are certain routines, there are certain procedures, certain sequences that you can set that when the object gets created, those routines are going to get followed for the thing to get built. You can do that. These look like a function, but they are not functions. You cannot call them. That's a huge mistake that people make. These things are called constructors. They look like functions, but they are not. You cannot call them. You, you ask for creation of an object, and that causes the constructor to be invoked so the object is built in a certain way. These functions are built like this. So when you actually want, for example, if I want the box to get built in certain way, obviously this has to be public because otherwise how you want to build them. So you're going to, the name of these constructors are exactly as the name of the class. And they don't have a return type. So they are now functions. Then I write over here box. So so when I, I'm going to, I'm essentially I'm saying when a box is getting, getting created and I'm not mentioning how, I want, say, what do you want to happen to a box? You want it to be empty? Maybe that's your logic. Sure. I want it to be empty. So when a box gets created, I want it to be empty. That's what you do. Another person says, no, when I create a box, I want a standard box when I don't mention to be 10 by 10. You can do that. It's your choice based on your business logic. Let's say I want the box that I don't mention to be 5 by 5. If I want to do that, what do I do? I'm going to write right over here, set 5, 5. So now, when the box is getting created over here without me mentioning how, if I actually draw it immediately without even saying what it is and I run it, you will see that it's going to be 5 by 5. Why? Because I mentioned when the box is created, I want it to be 5 by 5. So essentially, at the moment of creation, take a look. At the moment of creation, it immediately jumps to the constructor and does it 
what it's supposed to do. And therefore, it's going to draw it 5 by 5. OK? Next thing. Sometimes you want to say, OK, I want an Apple laptop. OK? So you actually mention what type of a laptop you want. You just say, give me a laptop, and they're going to give you what the college rents out. Like, for example, you want to get a rental from college? You can do that, right? You don't have an option. They give you one. That's it. Well, when you want to buy, you can actually specify what do you want. I want, when I build a box, I want to tell it what the site to be. You can actually do that. I can say box, box, let's say integer side. So when I mention I want it to be what we decide, I'm going to set the side to the, so, um, I'm going to set the, uh, both width and height to that side. And in here, I'm going to mention I want my box to get created with an integer that is the side. OK? Now, in my program, I can say box 10. So I'm saying because the constructor of the box is getting an integer, I can set it to an integer. So what happens when it actually runs for the first one, it is going to go to the default constructor, no argument constructor, because I didn't mention how. It's going to make it 5 by 5. And when it goes to this one, because I'm mentioning I'm providing an integer, it's going to go to the one that is integer, and the side will be 10. Now it's going to make it both sides. Now, if you want to make the box the way you want it, width and height, provide it. No problem. You can actually have a constructor for the box that has width and height set. And you can actually create it exactly how you want it. Remember, reuse your code. Now in here, I can say box C 20, not 20, uh, 20 and 10, and C dot draw. And if I run it, I'm going to have the third one created 20 by 10, as you see. So the first one was 5, then 10, then that's that. OK? Now, as you see over here, I put an assignment over here. I just wanted to give you the message. And this is something that I want you to remember till the day you die. Assignment at the moment of creation is not an assignment. It's a call. It's a request for a constructor. That's not assignment. B is a B, box. 10 is an integer. Assignment is not something compatible between the two. OK? So essentially, I could have written it like this too. They are the same. Potatoes, potatoes. It works exactly the same way. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, look at this. You can do that. What is the build error for? Oh, IO stream. Yeah, thank you very much. IO scream, IO scream. IO scream. OK. So essentially, you see 3 is printed. So remember, assignment at the moment of creation is always a call to a constructor. So that, that, same. No difference. Does not make any difference. OK? Now, for those who think they can call a constructor, 
It's a big mistake. Look at this. Did I just call the constructor? No. Let me tell you what happened. At line 15, at line 15, okay, a nameless box got created. An object of type box, a nameless box got created. Its method was called, at line 15 and a half it died. So you think you are calling the constructor. You are not. You are building an object, but nameless. And because it's nameless, it dies immediately. People have the illusion, like they do this. Take a look. Now I'm going to write something in here, and you'll see what I mean. So take a look. If, I could, if, I was, if what I was saying was right, in here I could do this, right? Correct? I called the constructor. Right? Let's see what happens. It's B, right? Take a look. What happened? In here, when the constructor was called, Side was passed to this one, that was the number 10, okay? Then, at line 11, a temporary nameless object of box got created with sides of 10, and then died. It had nothing to do with this constructor. It just built a box. You built a box and it died. You did nothing to it. Not, you didn't print it, you didn't do anything. You just created a temporary box with no name. It's as if... I, I do this as if I write int i and don't do anything with i. You created a box that didn't have any effect on anything. Remember, you cannot call a constructor. It is not a function. And we're going to end that today with that. Yes, ma'am. Of course you can. I just did two seconds ago, and I showed you it doesn't work. Two seconds ago. This is C++. Yeah, fire him. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, I just showed it to you. Like, like, just uncom like, just call one and see what happens. Walk through it. That's the best way. Walk through it and you'll see nothing is there. Yes. You're talking about this one. Okay, let me, just do so let me just do something before you go. I know it's three minutes past. Can you wait two more minutes to show you something? Yeah. You're going to get a ticket? Okay, you come back next step. Shall I? Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this very quickly. Okay, listen to me very quickly. And this is something that I wanted to teach next, next day that you're coming in. But I'm going to show you just to give you an example. And don't pack your stuff. Give me two seconds. The way we did constructor, you can have something called destructor, which means clean up after you go. I don't have any cleanup. If it was dynamic memory allocation, I had something to do. But I can create a constructor, OK? And constructors happen when the objects die. Right when they die, they happen. OK? They get invoked automatically. It's exactly like constructor, but they get called right before the object dies. Their signature is like this. So you actually write exactly like the no argument constructor, but you put a tilde at the beginning. That's that. 
So if I do something like this, if I actually create that box thingy, so I create box, destructor, and in here I'm just going to say C out uh, M with, don't rush me, M height is dying. Okay? Now, I'm going to put an X in the middle just to see. So, now if I run this program, you will see that everything dies in reverse order. So, when I run this, when I run this program, you will see that, um, I, I'm going to explain this later. You see, 20 by 10 is dying, 10 by 10 is dying, 5 by 10. So, everything dies in reverse order, the way they built. It's like you build something together, it comes up, then they go from the top in a reverse order. Well, let me show you this. Now, if I say halfway through this, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say box. And I'm going to put three, four, and then I'm going to say draw. OK? Let me run it and see what happens. So as you see, 3 by 4 is created and died right after. So essentially, it gets created in here, does its thing, it's a nameless thing. Anything that is nameless in C++ is doomed to die immediately. And poof, it's dead as 12.5. And then this happens. Got it? Have a good day.